Welcome back to The Bright Side. We're talking connective tissue, the bulk of the body, the meat of the body. We've been talking about it for a while. Well, makes sense. Half, uh, uh, maybe 40, 40% or so of the body is made up of connective tissue. 40 to 50% of the body is made up to, of connective tissue. And this is the home or the birthplace of much of the degenerative disease process. This is where the body really breaks down in earnest when we are dealing with degenerative diseases or, or autoimmune diseases or cancer, God forbid, for the most part, affects this area, part of the body and have certainly accelerated aging does as well. And that includes, of course, the skin. If you want to have beautiful skin, if you want to have young, wrinkle-free, healthy skin, you got to work on the connective tissue. And this is really especially relevant if you're thinking about getting plastic surgery or, or if, you're, if you're just a consumer and you're spending, uh, you're among the millions and billions of consumers around the world who are spending billions, hundreds of billions of dollars on skincare products that are supposed to be addressing wrinkles and supposed to be addressing fine lines and crow's feet and the other visible signs of the aging process. Skincare is a big business, folks. And one of the reasons it's such a big business is because the profit margins are so unbelievably huge. Everybody wants to jump into the skincare business. And unfortunately, there's very little you can do to connective tissue, which is where the bulk of skin issues take place, the bulk of the visible signs of skin aging take place in the connective tissue, and there's very little you can do topically. There's a little you can do. Certainly, there's a few things that you can do, but for the most part, building the connective tissue in the skin to prevent the signs of aging or to prevent cellulite or to prevent any kind of superficial or apparently superficial skin care problem really involves internal strategies uh, that are surround building connective tissue. And I'm telling you, even companies that I that are ordinarily trustworthy, Life Extension, I love Life Extension. I've been reading Life Extension now for going on 30 years. The book, Life Extension, as well as the magazine, Life Extension, and there's good stuff in there, and they got good products for the most part, but even Life Extension has got to jump in on this, this bandwagon, this skincare health bandwagon with supposed anti-aging products with various herbs and, and plant materials and uh, essential oils, etc. Folks, essential oils cannot help you at the connective tissue level. There's not a single essential oil that can do that. Unless you put the essential oil right in the dermis, right in the connective tissue. A company called Senogenics sent me a, a note just a couple days ago, an email a couple days ago. Uh, Senogenics Elite Skin Care. Now, I don't like ripping on any companies, but Again, you got rose floral water, you got a tea tree oil, you got myrrh oil. This is all products in this company's product, concentrated restorative serum, they call it. It's a breakthrough anti-aging cosmeceutical. In fact, it's the latest breakthrough anti-aging skincare cosmeceutical to hit the market, according to their advertising copy here. Now, they do have something called uh, epidermal growth factor. Great, but that's still epidermal growth factor. It's not connective tissue. And other than that, you've got ingredients like blue-green algae extract, caviar extract, uh, apric uh, argan oil, uh, 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 tetrahydropiperine, which is supposed to, it's a black pepper extract, supposed to help things penetrate. The point is, is you can't use these kinds of ingredients, and you're, if you're spending money buying these kinds of products that have these kind of ingredients because you're trying to take care of your wrinkles and fine lines, you are wasting your money. And I'm just, sitting, I'm just saying this here as an advocate for you guys, as somebody who's been in the skincare business now, the healthcare business and the skincare business for 30 years, I'm simply telling you this so you know what you're getting yourself into. You can't go by companies, uh, uh, the repu reputability of companies. You can't go by advertising copy. You can't even go really by pictures and graphs and pseudoscience. You've got to go by the logic of the ingredients. The logic of the ingredients tells you whether something is going to work or not. Now, caviar. Why would caviar in a skincare product that you put on top of your skin have an effect on the connective tissue. What is in caviar that could possibly have that kind of effect? You know, what's in argan oil? What's in apricot kernel oil? Ask, ask yourself these kinds of questions when you read the advertising copy and be an ingredient deck reader. Not just with, with food. We talk about this all the time. You want to read the ingredient decks on all the foods you're eating, especially processed food, which is usually the kind of food that's going to have ingredients. And also with your, with your skincare product, understand the logic behind ingredients and how they're how are they really working when you when you're reading the advertising copy. Ask yourself how are these things really working. In my opinion, and this is just my opinion, you guys take this for what it's worth. The worst connective tissue skincare fraud is plastic surgery. 
Plastic surgery is the ultimate example of doctoring. Doctoring mechanically. Now, we got doctoring with drugs, chemotherapy dropping, uh, doctoring. I'm not talking about cancer chemotherapy. I'm talking about pharmaceutical chemotherapy for autoimmune diseases, for inflammatory diseases, for all health issues. We've got this model, this medical model that most of us have bought into, the perhaps present company not included. You guys listening, maybe not. But for the vast majority of Americans and the vast majority of world citizens have really bought into this idea of chemotherapy manipulation of the body. And it's bad. It's, it's awful when it's internal. Absolutely awful. But it's just maybe not just as bad. But it's still pretty lousy when you have this manipulation model, this doctoring model applied to the mechanics of the tissue. That is plastic surgery. Uh, I have a friend who does. Um, uh, he can give you a six-pack ab. He's a plastic surgeon, but he works on abdominal muscles, and he can give you a six-pack ab. Right? He can actually give you muscles in your abdominals through surgical procedures. He can do the same thing in your pecs. He can do this. Uh, your chest muscles, he can do the same thing in your gastrocnemius, he can do it in your gluteus maximus, that's your, your calves and your butt. These are all examples of doctoring to manipulate muscle tissue. I'll tell you about that when it comes to the face here when we come back to the uh, come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, you're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. All right, we got a couple lines open for you at 855-660-4261 if you want to contribute to the conversation. If you've got questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we'll get your calls in the next segment. Try to get on board as early as you can so we can get to as many calls as possible. We're talking about connective tissue and the difference between connective tissue and the surface of the skin. The worst connective tissue fraud, there's all these connective tissue frauds, products and procedures that either pretend or, or imply somehow that you could put something on top of the skin and you'll end up with connective tissue effects, anti-wrinkle effects or, or tissue building effects. There's doctoring kinds of fraud where they manipulate connective tissue using surgery. Plastic surgery to me is kind of an ultimate example of this doctoring. Doctoring, by the way, according to the Cambridge Dictionary online, is defined as, to, at least in one way, as to change in order to deceive. That's right. Doctoring is to change, and they're referring to documents, but it could be any kind of anything. You could doctor anything, really. You could doctor evidence. You could doctor uh, your car. You could doctor your body. You could doctor your face with plastic surgery. To doctor is to change in order to deceive. What does that tell you about our medical model? To change in order to deceive. That's what doctoring is, and it's bad enough. It's it's really bad when it comes to the inside of the body, but it's bad when it comes to the outside of the body as well. We become so desperate to become fixed. And because we don't understand how our bodies are composed, how our bodies are put together, we become victims of this medical model that is exactly as ignorant as we are. Yeah, they got, uh, they understand all the mechanics. They may understand all the uh, mechanics of the genetics and all the mechanics of the molecular movements and all the different kinds of cell structures. And we've got electron microscopy, microscopy that can detect everything that's happening in a cell. But when it comes to how you restore the body back into its God-given state of health and wellness and strength and vitality, the state that we have when we're younger, in order to, when it comes to restoring the body to this state, there's nothing doctors can do. So what ends up happening is we end up with this doctoring model that exists, that, that, that whose life is dependent on creating fraud, on creating deceit, on making changes in the body in order to deceive. That's the definition of doctoring according to the Cambridge Dictionary online. If you want healthy connective tissue, which is what looking good is feeling about, or looking good is really about, and what feeling good is really about, if you want healthy connective tissue, you got to know how to build connective tissue, and nothing a doctor can do will help you build connective tissue. Same is true about the skin. If you want to approach your skin health issues, if you want to truly approach wrinkles and fine lines, reverse wrinkles and fine lines, and the signs of accelerated aging, you want to use nutritional connective tissue building strategies. If you use these nutritional connective tissue building strategies for your wrinkles and for your fine lines, guess what? You're going to get global, systemic, holistic, entire body connective tissue benefits when you take vitamin C. Simple example. Vitamin C is one of the most important connective tissue building supplements, substances, 
uh, vitamins you could ever use. It may be the key. It is the key, connective tissue building vitamin. You can't make connective tissue without it. It's the trigger that turns on connective tissue. But here's the neat thing. If you take uh, vitamin C, 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C, you'll get 1,000 milligrams in, the, in your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. If you take your Beyond Tangy Tangerine because you're trying to get vitamin C for building connective tissue in your face for anti-wrinkles, and that's a great reason to use the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, guess what else? You're going to get benefits in the bone. You're going to get benefits in the connective tissue in your arteries. You're going to run lower risks for stroke and aneurysms. You're going to have beefier connective tissue in your legs. You're going to have a reduced incidence of autoimmune disease in the connective tissue, all by using vitamin C to help your wrinkles. That's how cool this is once you understand how to take care, how the body is composed, and how to take care of each parts of the composition of the body. Supplements for building connective tissue include amino acids, especially cysteine, which we've been talking about, and glutamine, which we've been talking about. Supplements for building connective tissue include copper. Dr. Wallach's always talking about copper and connective tissue. Essential fatty acids can help build connective tissue. Focusing on the digestive system so you're absorbing your amino acids and absorbing your essential fatty, essential fatty acids can help you build connective tissue. Using bone soup, these are all strategies for building connective tissue, which means building bone, which means building the, uh, the uh, connective tissue in the circulatory system, the connective tissue in the lymphatic system, the connective tissue in the skin, preventing cellulite, all in in one fell swoop. Using supplements to build connective tissue, build the entire connective tissue in the body. It also means you'll be building connective tissue internally so everything will be held in place more effectively. You'll be reducing your risks of hernias. You'll be reducing the likelihood of prolapses. And it's not just supplements. Exercise can do it too. Exercise is one of the most significant and dramatic things you could do to build connective tissue. Weight-bearing exercises especially. And of course, you can exercise your skin too. You can put things on the skin. There's not a lot. Caviar is not going to do it. Argan oil is not going to do it. And, and perhaps caviar and argan oil have some, some interesting things in them. I don't know what they are, but you know, argan oil has got some polyphenols probably and some, some, some things that, uh, ingredients that will protect your skin from the sun. Uh, caviar probably has a little bit of nutrition, but that's not really what you need to build connective tissue in the skin topically. What do you need to do? Three things. I call them the big three skincare ingredients. These are the big three skincare ingredients, and they work because they address connective tissue. The first thing is the alpha hydroxy acid family. All the alpha hydroxy acids. We talk about these things all the time. Women in the audience probably know what these things are. They've been out for now 20 years. When they first came out, they pretty much revolutionized skincare. If you've heard of estheticians, and I know a lot of you guys listening are estheticians, there were no estheticians really before alpha hydroxy acids and glycolic acid became popular. I remember when I started working with glycolic acid, I bought a big drum of this stuff, 55 gallons for like $400. Nobody even heard of it. I had one doctor who was, rec who was uh, uh, writing prescriptions for it, so I bought myself a drum of it. And then a couple of, um, within a year or so, Estee Lauder and Avon came out with their alpha hydroxy acid products and then the cat was out of the bag and everybody knew about glycolic acid and various alpha hydroxy acids. These substances are found in lemons, and limes, and wine, and in uh, apple cider vinegar and all vinegar. They're found throughout nature. They're found in your skin. They're found in cells. By all, uh, lactic acid, which you've all heard about, that's an example of alpha hydroxy acids. But what turns out when you put this stuff on top of your skin, by disrupting the skin, by disrupting the surface of the skin, you can actually uh, affect the tissue underneath, the connective tissue, and that's so cool. That's why these things are so powerful and so important, because you can actually put them on top of the skin and get connective tissue effects. And there's a couple other ingredients. I'll tell you what those are uh, when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side, 855-660-4261 is our number. Got a couple lines open for you. Love to hear from you. We're coming back at you right after this. Don't go away. Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 
855-660-4261 is our call in number. Got some lines open for you. We'll get your calls here in just a minute. So if you want to build connective tissue, if you want to fight wrinkles, you want to fight anti age or fight the aging process, if you're not looking as good as you used to look, you notice the fine lines, your connective tissue is breaking down. That's what's happening, and you're just seeing it on your skin, and rest assured it's happening in your blood vessels, it's happening in your bones, it's happening everywhere in your body. Connective tissue doesn't break down just in one area. You may notice it in one area, and the skin is obviously going to be the first place where you notice it. But it's breaking down, Your uh, the connective tissue is breaking down throughout the body. That's why internal supplementation and dietary strategies and ex- exercise and other lifestyle changes that you make in your life are the most important thing you can do to build connective tissue and to reverse this uh, reverse the aging process. If you see an older person, they're all shriveled up. You're looking at connective tissue defects. You're looking at breakdowns in connective tissue. Now, when it comes to the skin, you got an, uh, a second opportunity because with the skin, if you're, you choose correct ingredients, you can address connective tissue topically. Alpha hydroxy acids are the first thing you want to do by disrupting the, the, uh, the, the, dead cells, the dead cells on the surface of the skin and some of the cells underneath the surface of the skin. Signals are sent down, chemical signals are sent down to the connective tissue to tell the connective tissue to grow. So glycolic acid, lactic acid, if you want to use fruits and vegetables, look for citrus fruits. Those tend to be high in alpha hydroxy acids. Make toners, make masks, put the stuff on your skin. You can make wonderful masks using lemons and limes and berries. Use avocado as a base or yogurt as a base. Yogurt's got alpha alpha hydroxy acids. You can make a yogurt mask. That's a great way to deliver alpha hydroxy acids to your skin. And by mask, I mean just put yogurt right on your skin. I love the idea of using foods, active foods on your skin. With yogurt, you'll get with yogurt, you'll get probiotics as well. Good bacteria that can help restore bacterial balance on the surface of the skin. So alpha hydroxy acids in foods or straight alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic acid or lactic acid, which you can get a, a compounding pharmacist to make for you, or you can find products that contain these alpha hydroxy acids. Look for toners. Look for low pH. That means acidic. Don't worry so much about how much of an alpha hydroxy acid is in a product. Look for the acid level, the pH. Now, a lot of companies aren't going to tell you their pH, and a lot of sales folks, department store people, even, even estheticians don't necessarily know the pH. Do your research. The pH pH or the acid level of the skin is right around five or so. And so if you want an active acid product on your skin, you got to have a lower pH, a more acidic, a more acidic product than your skin. If your skin's got a pH of five, you want a product that's got maybe a pH of three to really get some, some juicy connective tissue building effects. Even a pH of two, which is pretty acidic, Coca-Cola, a glass of Coke maybe has a pH of 2.4, a glass of orange juice is right around a, a pH of 2.4. So if you put something on your skin that's got a pH of two, 2.5, it's not gonna be tremendously acidic, it's not gonna cause any burning or anything, but it can be very stimulating for the connective tissue. And, then, and, and that's kind of like an exercise, by the way. That actually is a type of exercise for the skin. When you're lifting weights, you're disrupting muscle tissue, Issue. You're creating a destabilization in muscle cells, and the response of the muscle cells and the muscle tissue, the response of muscle cells to that destabilization is to grow, and the net effect is more muscle tissue and connective tissue for that matter. The same is true about the skin. By disrupting the cells on the surface of the skin, by destabilizing those cells, they get the idea basically that they need to grow, they need to produce more tissue. It's kind of an exercise like effect, and as we've said in the past, when you come home from the gym, that's when you really want to make sure that you're using your nutritional supplements. Well, likewise with the skin. After you apply alpha hydroxy acids to the skin, you want to make sure that you're dosing the skin with the two most important vitamins for growing connective tissue. That's internally as well as topically, the two most important vitamins for growing connective tissue are vitamin C, which is the most important vitamin, and vitamin A. Vitamin C and A are your two main connective tissue building vitamins. And that's why you want to be supplementing with both of those. Vitamin C, maybe 5,000 grams, 10,000 grams a day, using your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which will get you 1,000 grams of vitamin C. And then vitamin A, 20,000 international units a day of vitamin A. I keep getting letters about folks who worry about vitamin A toxicity and brittle bones and vitamin A. 
And vi- you don't want to think about a vitamin as ever causing any kind of brittle bones or any kind of toxicity because that's not how vitamins work. That being said, vitamin A is part of a complex of nutrients. And you, whenever you're taking your vitamin A, it's a good idea to make sure you're taking it with essential fatty acids, with fatty foods, and with vitamin D. Vitamin A topically can do tremendous things for the skin, for the connective tissue in the skin. Most folks have heard of Retin-A, and Retin-A exerts much of its positive effects on the skin. You get get your benefits from Vitamin A, Retin-A, in the connective tissue, at the connective tissue level. Now, Vitamin A also has some benefits for the surface of the skin. This makes Vitamin A really, really neat and important. It has not just effects for connective tissue, but also for the surface of the skin. You can use Retin-A or, or other forms of Vitamin A for helping light and dark spots. There's a form of Vitamin A called Retinyl Palmitate. That's the kind of Vitamin A you'll find in a lot of over-the-counter skincare products. And that's got the Retinyl Palmitate. Fancy way of saying vitamin A palmitate is a form of vitamin A that's very, very mild, but you can get some nice effects. You can get moisturizing effects, certainly, and you can get some skin lightening effects. And if you use retinol palmitate or retin-A or, ret- or something called retinol after you use your glycolic or alpha hydroxy acids, boom, you can really hit that connective tissue, stimulate more collagen, stimulate more of the uh, sugars that help beef up the connective tissue. And by the way, sugars have a very important feedback effect on the cells. They help nourish the cells, and that means means not only are you going to be building connective tissue, but you're going to have healthier cells also. By the way, these proteoglycans or or sugars that are in the connective tissue are the only substances that we know of in the body that contain all three macronutrients. These proteoglycans or, or polysaccharide kinds of entities, which are sugars that live in the connective tissue, are sources of protein, they're sources of fat, and they're sources of sugar, which means them which makes them very, very important for helping connective tissue cells stay healthy. Fibroblasts, for example, become healthier in, when connective tissue, when uh, uh, proteoglycans in the connective tissue are, are, are thick and robust and there's plenty of them around. And that's true also with joints. That means if you're using glucosamine, the glucogel caps for your joints, make sure you're getting enough vitamin A and make sure you're getting enough vitamin C as well. Vitamin A and vitamin C can help protect and help nourish the cells that make cartilage, which, of course, is another type of connective tissue. All right. We'll continue talking about uh, skin health and connective tissue building strategies. I'll tell you a little bit about the electrical nature of connective tissue, as well as the intelligence of connective tissue. Connective tissue can actually be thought of, connective tissue cells can actually be thought of as being computerized. And the B for the matrix, the sugars and, and the collagen that make up connective tissue can also be thought of as kind of electrical store, uh, I- electrical information storage devices. How do you like that? Our connective tissue is not only uh, electrical, it's not only, it not only provides structure to the body, but it also has an information storage property just like a computer chip does. And we'll tell you what I, we'll tell you all about that. We'll continue talking about connective tissue and nutritional strategies for building connective tissue on our next Bright Side episode. All right, we'll get your calls here on our, uh, when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 855-660-4261. Sorry we left you on hold. We'll get to you when we come back. 855-660-4261 is our number. We're coming back at you right after this. Don't go away. On the bright side, reading from, uh, let's see, a newly published review in Nutrition Journal. This is a quote, evidence from numerous, this is on uh, folks who take nutritional supplements. Quote, evidence from numerous surveys show that dietary supplement users are more likely than non-users to adopt a number of positive health-related habits such as healthier diets, exercising regularly, maintaining a healthy body weight, and avoiding tobacco products. This has been my experience as well. Folks who know about supplementation, you guys listening to this program, folks who are savvy enough, hip enough to understand about the importance of nutritional supplementation, more than likely also understand about the importance of exercise, understand the importance of dietary strategies, and most importantly, understand the importance of not believing the nonsense that is spewed out, that is vomited out by what we call the modern medical model. Folks who are supplementing, folks who understand the importance of supplementation, recognize that good health is our individual responsibility. It's not the doctor's responsibility to get us healthy. And as it turns out, according to this article anyway, this study, uh, uh, this review in Nutrition Journal, which is a highly regarded 
uh, medical, uh, tech, uh, scientific journal about nutrition. Supplement users, dietary supplement users, are more aware of the power of taking control of their own health and not abdicating responsibility for their health or the health of their family to the medical model. All right, let's see. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. Time to hit the phones. 855-660-4261 is our number. Dave in Michigan. What's up, buddy? Welcome to The Bright Side. David in Michigan. Let me click the button here. Dave in Michigan, you there? Dave, going once, going twice. Ben. Going. Dave? Hey, thanks for the show, brother. We love you here in Michigan. Thank you. I appreciate that. What's going on today? Uh, well, first I'd like to wish my beautiful wife, Pamela, a uh, happy anniversary. We were married 32 years ago today. Congratulations. And 32 thank you. years. And I'd like to thank you yeah. for bringing us on the other side of our health issues. Uh, nice. Because without you and Longevity, I don't think we would be maybe not be alive today. My wife got wow. over tw- over 25 diseases uh, with your guidance and nice. uh, taking the Longevity products. And, That's uh, awesome. That's an we awesome. We just love testimony. you. Oh, thank you so much. I hope we got that recorded. Thank you so much. You know, I get these <laughs> testimonials all the time, and I'm the worst marketer ever because I always forget to record them or, or forget uh, exactly who told me. But, but, but thank you so much for sharing. I hope you helped a lot of people with that. What's going on today? How can I help you well, today, Dave? Well, I got a buddy uh, that was told he should be taking colostrum. Uh, all right. It, what do you think about that? Colostrum's awesome stuff. Here's the deal. Colostrum is what's called first milk. It's the most intense concentrated part of the mother's milk. Uh, mother's milk in general is a wonderful food. It's, it's nature's way of building the digestive tract, nature's way of building the immune system, nature's way of building the nervous system in a baby. But the most concentrated part of the milk is the first part of the milk. It's got the most growth factors. It's got the most immune factors, the most antibacterial factors. It's in the first part of the milk. And by the way, this is one of the reasons why dairy products and animal products in general are, are such a, a, a better form of protein, a better source of protein, and eggs for that matter, than vegetables, because these kinds of foods, eggs and dairy, are specifically designed by the divine force to produce a life, to make life grow, to make a biological entity robust and healthy and more resistant to, to diseases. And it's especially true about milk, and especially true about the first part of the milk, the first part of the milk, the, the, uh, the they call first milk because as soon as a baby's born and the mother produces milk, the first milk that the baby, the mother produces for the baby is the densest and most concentrated, and that is called colostrum. Now, that's good and that's bad. It's good because it's absolutely loaded. It's, it's like super milk. It's like, excuse the, the expression, but it's like milk on steroids, if you will, because it's the most concentrated form of milk. But the problem is, is that the cows are given hormones, the cows are given antibiotics, the cows are given insulin and other whatever else the cows are given. A lot of that stuff is going to get concentrated in the first milk. Everything's going to get concentrated in the first milk. So you want to make absolutely, positively sure, 100% sure that you're using a clean source of colostrum. Uh, hopefully, uh, ideally, well, only organic, really. And then also grass-fed is always going to be better than grain-fed. Grass-fed animals tend to have more omega fats. Grass has got all the good stuff. Grains does, does not have all the good stuff. When you eat grass-fed meat and uh, grass uh, milk from grass-fed cows, you're getting the omega-3 fats that are found in grass and a lot of the other, nut- a lot of the other good fats. Uh, grass, believe it or not, is a good source of fats, as opposed to grains, where you're getting the omega-6 fats which are not the not-so-good sources of fats. And you'll also get, when you eat grain-fed cattle and, and drink grain-fed milk, you'll also tend to get more hormones and antibiotics because grain-fed cattle are not as healthy as grass-fed cattle. So they have to give them more antibiotics, and, and they tend to eat different kinds of foods, etc. So, so I hope that answers your question. That's a, a, a kind of a convoluted answer, but I hope I answered your question there. Anything else, Dave? I did. But how long, how should we take it every day? Drink it. Uh, yeah, heck yeah. Okay. Drink as much as you want. Yeah, drink Excellent. it every day. Drink it twice a day. Drink it three times a day. You know, it's, it's awesome stuff. It's expensive. Do you have a good source of it? Uh, well, he, it's my buddy in Texas. He found a source online, uh, non-GMO. Yeah, organic uh, and all that. No hormones. Yeah, and... fed organic. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's taking a couple scoops every day, him and his yeah. wife, and uh, send, I guess we're going to start taking it too now. Do you have a link? You can tell the listeners, or you want to send me a link? Uh, you know what? I will send it to you when I get it. Yeah, send me a link, ben at com, and I'll tell everybody about it. Excellent. Thanks, Thanks, ben. Dave. Thanks for, uh, thanks for the kind words. Appreciate it, and happy Valen... Valen... What did you say? Valen... Nursery. 
how do you say that? Valenversary. Valenversary. All right. Thanks, Dave. Congratulations, man. Take care. All right. Uh, Steve in Virginia, got a couple minutes. What's going on, my friend? Welcome back to the Bright Side. Hi. Thank you very much. Hey. I uh, just wanted to ask if you had any suggestions on this, uh, uh, this uh, kind of a, uh, oh, I don't know, a lingering cold or something. I've had Ooh. this suggestion for quite a while. Cold and, uh, shouldn't linger. Cold should never linger. Oh, no, I'm gonna have and, a, uh, it's the first time I've ever had that. And, um, I hear it in your voice there, Steve. Here, let, let me give you my foolproof way to knock out a cold. It helps if you catch the cold. If you, if you, uh, I don't mean to say catch the cold. If you, if you approach the cold right when you first start getting it, whenever you're getting a cold, you'll notice that there's a little period of time where you go from being healthy to being sick, and it takes about sometimes it takes a couple hours, maybe three, four hours, where you're feeling fine, you're feeling great, and then all of a sudden you can, you got to be really sensitive here. You got to be very sensitive to your body. You'll notice that you're starting to get a little bit sluggish and a little bit slow. It happens very gradually, but within a couple of hours, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I think. I'm getting a cold. Now, what you want to do ideally is you want to somehow in that kind of begin to recognize or get familiar with that state, that transition point between feeling great and feeling sick. And at that point, there's three things that you want to do. Now, if you don't catch it at that point, you can still use these strategies to speed up the healing process. But if you you catch it early enough, you don't even have to get the cold at all. Number one, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you're drinking a lot of fluid, water ideally, and then some Beyond Tangy Tangerine to get your nutrients. And then uh, uh, that way you'll, you'll help dilute the cold, you'll dilute the toxins, and you'll help improve and accelerate the excretion of those toxins simply by drinking water. And I mean lots, like a gallon. A gallon in you know a day maybe, or a gallon in eight hours, half a gallon in four hours. Just guzzle the water, and then every once in a while throw in some beyond tangy tangerine because you're going to be losing some of your nutrients, your water-soluble nutrients with that water. That's step number one and that'll help flush out the toxins out of your body. Step number two is a couple of very, very key nutritional supplements. One is vitamin C. And this is the time for mega dosing on vitamin C. And again, ideally, you want to catch it right when you're feeling that sticking point, that sluggishness. You're starting to get a little mucusy and snotty and slow. High doses of vitamin C, and I'm talking 10 grams a day to 15 grams a day. You'll get a gram or so per two scoops of the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Make sure that you're using 50 milligrams of zinc a day. You should always be doing that. Zinc picolinate a day as well. Step number three, make sure you get 12 hours of sleep that night, even if you have to take a Benadryl to do it. By the way, Benadryl. Benadryl's uh, alter ego, its other name, its uh, AKA also known as, is Somonex. Benadryl is a sleeping pill, and I don't usually recommend that people take sleeping pills, but when you're feeling like you're getting sick, in my experience, getting 12 hours, ideally, uh, even 10 or 12, uh, 11 hours, but I, uh, more than 10, one night of sleep is a great way for your body to recover. Your body heals, it recovers, it grows, it fights diseases, it fights illnesses while you are sleeping. So maximizing this period of sleep is another important part of the strategy. Those three things alone, if you do them and you catch it early enough, you're cold, you will not have your cold. Uh, fourth step that I like to do is get on my rebounder and spend about two or three minutes rebounding or doing some kind of intense workout, even if it's a brisk, and I mean brisk, walk around the block or real fast walking up the stairs and trying to catch it, uh, uh, approach, uh, approach the cold during this period of stickiness between the time when you're feeling well and the time when you're getting a cold, that transition point. Hope that helped you, Steve. Thanks so much for your call. And that's all the time we have for today. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You've been listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. We'll continue talking about connective tissue building. I'll tell you about the computer nature of connective tissue on our next Bright Side episode. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have a wonderful, beautiful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.